Hey everyone, yes, there's a fountain in the background here, and I am on my travels and travails, but uh, of course I have to do a quickish video on the Ahmed Rosario trade, just so if you wanted more info, I wanted to provide it for you from my perspective, because of course me being gone before the deadline leads to such things. So I think by all regards, this was a bit of a surprising trade. Uh, this is what I like to call one of those trades that allows you to know if you're following the right people. If someone is sitting back there saying that Ahmed Rosario should net some big return, then they don't really understand things. Ahmed Rosario is a rental. He is, the last two years, the worst defensive shortstop in baseball. He is not an everyday player. He was miscast. Listen, Ahmed is a great human being. He is a great teammate. He destroys left-handed pitching. Uh, he has great straight uh, speed. You know, he can run in a line really well, steals bases. He's a great guy on the base pass. He's a great guy in the locker room. He's a great guy against left-handed pitching. This team actually could use Ahmed and more guys like him. But he's basically Jordan Luplo-esque, except for he's asked to play every day and they had him batting two. So I, there's been this, like, I don't like Ahmed. It's not that. Ahmed was miscast and misused. I wish him well. Uh, you know, he's leaving Cleveland before that he was with the Mets. Those aren't great developmental situations for hitters. Uh, he's going to the Dodgers. If you told me that this ends up being a really poor trade for Cleveland, I wouldn't be shocked. But right now, I think it's a win-win uh, because, you know, like I said, for it to turn to a poor trade, he's only 27. You know, maybe the Dodgers can unlock something. Uh, I thought it was very interesting when the Dodgers announced him as a you know in, infielder and an outfielder, and all I could think about was the Mets fans. When Cleveland acquired Ahmed, I'm like, this is great. Andres will go to shortstop, and Ahmed can be a league average outfielder, and this team is desperate for league average outfielders. When all the Met fans were like, oh, poor, oh, honey, you, you don't know. You can't play that position. Uh, so when I look at the Dodgers announcing that, I can only think about the Mets fans telling me Ahmed can't play outfield and let Dodgers fans don't know. No, yeah, he, he can't play outfield. Uh, it, it's a bit of an issue. Uh, maybe in short spurts, but it was pretty ugly when given that chance. The Dodgers, I think, will maximize him by making him the platoon player he should be. And again, it was ne never any issue with Ahmed. I just think he was misused here and he needed to kind of be traded away uh, to make this team better because your best hitter is supposed to hit two by most analytical models. And against lefties, that's fine. Ahmed, too, is great, but that's, I think... 74% of the innings thrown in baseball are by right-handed pitching. So that meant 74% of the time they had a lineup that was just not ideal with the most important spot being used on a guy who's not good against right-handed pitching. Very streaky hitter. Again, he's only 27, so we'll see what happens with him. Uh, but on that side of things, again, I wish him well. I hope he does great for the Dodgers. I have no ill feelings there. It's just he's a really poor defender and shouldn't really be playing every day against right-handers. This gives Cleveland a chance to move Gabby Arias into short or Ty Freeman. Now, if you want to really do a big upgrade in defense, put Gabby there. Freeman is, is a so-so defender. Or put Andres there and let, you know, three. here's the thing. Uh, both Gabby and Freeman have reverse splits. They're both right-handed bats. You don't hit lefties. Well, Gabby's really bad against lefties this year. So I am all for against righties having... Gabby at short, Andres at, at second, and then have Freeman play second and Andre short against lefties. I know Freeman's not necessarily the best against lefties either, but let's just get them in every day. Uh, I think this is addition by subtraction. Noah Syndergaard. Uh, he has been really bad this year. Uh, if you want a positive, Park Factors has Cleveland as a you know, 30 points lower in home runs. Now, part of Park Factors is just the amount of of what happens there. So yes, it is easier to hit home runs there because more home runs are hit there, but that's also because, you know, the Dodgers play there, whereas in Cleveland you have the Guardians, the worst power team in baseball. What's also interesting is in spite of those park factors saying, hey, yeah, you know, it's it, more home runs are given up there, and Syndergaard having a career-high home run rate, his FIP was nearly a run lower at home than it was on the road. So it doesn't necessarily point to, you know, Dodger Stadium being the issue. Uh, he was on the DL with a blister, but if you read any reports at the time, it was a blister slash reset slash mental health time. Uh, he has some really, really negative comments about just not knowing what's wrong with him and not having any clue how to get back to where he was. Cleveland went out and added him. He'll slot into this rotation, but 
again, if you're like, hey, Cleveland will work their devil magic. If I am making a rankings of the teams right now best at developing pitching, it goes Tampa, then the Dodgers, then Cleveland. This is where I debate it. You know, it, the next three, you can figure out your order, are, are the Brewers, the Mariners, and the Astros, uh, and the Marlins. But after those, that group, I mean, I, actually, I might put the Marlins three, Cleveland four, and then you got those other three. But I, that's the clear top seven. So I, I'm not sure there's necessarily something to fix in Syndergaard to make him a better pitcher. Why did they add him? Well, essentially, this was a, a net even. You know, there was no loss in terms of cash. The Dodgers covered the difference in salaries for the rest of the year. And Cleveland needs someone who can eat innings. That's all this comes down to. Uh, Williams, Allen, and Bybee are all on pitch counts and inning counts. And they're going to have to skip starts as we get closer uh, to the end of the year. That's also when people are like, hey, this team isn't going to tear down. Or how can you say that you know this team is not in the heat of it when they're two games back and one back in the last column? It's because their three best starters right now are, are all going to be limited. You're not going to have them all the way gun-ho down the, the stretch. We don't know what Quantrell is going to be when he's back. We're not sure what Beatonfield is going to be like when he's back. Beatonfield, last few starts are not great. His team's got more footage on him and kind of got a book together. Quantrell has just been hurt all year. Uh, McKenzie, we'll see. Bieber, we'll see. I, I'm putting no eggs in those baskets. So who else do they have in the minors? Well, you know, they just added Daniel Norris with with uh, Bieber being put on the 16A. Reminder that when Bieber and McKenzie come off, you're going to have to cut two guys. So you're going to have to figure that out. But right now, the only other pitchers on this 40-man who aren't with the team are Tim Heron, who's been up and down a bunch and may not be back till September just because of not wanting to expose him to waivers with the rule system. Hunter Gaddis, who they have been loath to go back to. And Joey Cantillo, who's going to be on the most extreme inning count of any of the pitchers that they have due to two years of very limited innings due to injuries. So they needed someone, and maybe they think there's enough there, or maybe they think they can you know, sit down and they know what to fix, or at least get Syndergaard back to average. Because here's the thing. Let's say Syndergaard comes back and is the greatest pitcher we've ever seen. He walks at the end of the year. This trade was totally about this year. There's no value after this year in what they did. They traded a med to get someone who can eat some innings because they don't have a lot of great internal options for that. Uh, they have a lot of guys who are hurt. They have a lot of guys who are ineffective. They don't want to go back to Plesak. That ship has sailed. He'll be DFA'd at the end of the year. So Syndergaard's going to go because, you know, we can go back to that loss uh, in the last bullpen game where they just ran out of arms. They need someone who can go and pitch four, five, six. And someone, frankly, like, if the game gets away from him, he's going to be left in there to deal with the mess. He is going to eat innings for this team, and that's that was the desire at this point. Uh, the Dodgers really didn't have any other options for him. Cleveland didn't have a lot of offers for Ahmed because he is a platoon player. He's loop low, but without the outfield defense and questionable infield defense. Uh, again, I, I wish Ahmed the best. I'm looking forward to the Gabby Arias shortstop. I think he is their best defensive choice there. If not, then Andres. Uh, if you want to go to Rokio, I am cool with that as well. Um, in uh, Freeman, I'm fine in like finding roles for him. It's just he's not the strongest defensive shortstop necessarily. He's fine. But you have so many better options. Let's not go to our, our second worst shortstop. And I, I, I hesitate to say worst because he's fine. But it's like let's you have three to four really good candidates. Let's let's go with them. So bottom line on this is you've got a bunch of rookie pitchers who are going to be on innings counts. You need more innings. They didn't have a lot of internal innings. Syndergaard has some things to figure out, but he's going to be out there to eat. I don't know about this cha team's chances to really compete just because of those innings counts. I think that's going to be a big issue and one of those things that's kind of not talked about enough right now because you know Williams, Bybee, Allen aren't going to pitch every fifth day from here on out. They're just not. There's going to be built-in rest days. There's going to be time off. There's going to be ways to maximize what they have. And yes, I just realized I forgot Cody Morris. Uh, we'll see as they try to, you know, get his arm built up as well. But they just needed more options. They got an option. I don't know if it's a great option, but I think this really shows that, listen, Cleveland didn't go out and get Thor uh, just because, you know, it's, it's great for the memes to add Thor to the Guardians. There just wasn't much to get for Ahmed. They made the best deal possible. They needed pitching depth. They got pitching depth. Uh, make sure to check out Lockdown Guardians for, you know, I, hopefully you already heard Justin's take. 
This is this is me from vacation giving you a hot take on it. It's a win-win for everyone. Thor needs a fresh place. Rosario, it's good for him to get a fresh start. Cleveland needs pitching depth. Uh, the Dodgers need some more infielders slash outfielders slash hitters. It, it, it's good for everyone. I, again, Ahmed Rosario, I'm going to end here on him. Great human by every account. So that's the most important thing. Great teammate. I, I think those are the two best traits about him. And I hope he does well. And I am looking forward to him being successful elsewhere. Uh, it was never about anything else than him being miscast here. So Ahmed, all the success in his future endeavors. And again, thank you for checking Locked, Out Guardi Locked On Guardians. This is Jeff Ellis from Vacation. Go, go, Guardians, go.